Hello guys, my name is Danny Mack and this is Finding Your Feet with XGen. Uh, just quickly before I jump into it, if you're keen to learn more about Action and you're struggling to find content, some notable artists to look out for are displayed on the screen now. And the reason I didn't just say their names and I've put them on the screen is because, I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how some of these names are supposed to be pronounced. Uh, so check them out. There's a few steps that must be taken in order for Action to work properly. They are important steps, so make sure you pay attention here. If we want to render using an external renderer such as RenderMan, which by the way I would recommend you all check out because it's great and it's free for non-commercial purposes, but if we want to use it then we want to make sure the plugin is loaded before the XGen plugin is loaded. The reason for this is because when we load the XGen plugin it's going to look for available renderers. So I'll go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager and locate RenderMan. and now I'll load in XGen. Next we need to open up our project window and set our project. XGen is very particular about file structure and for whatever reason doesn't like it if there's a space anywhere in the file path. So I either use underscores or camel case instead of spaces. Once we get further into creating XGen, we'll take a look around the folder structure that it's created. From my experience, understanding the file structure will give you a better sense of how XGen is working and can help with the inevitable troubleshooting. The next thing we should do is check that the model is appropriately scaled. This is not only important to the functionality of XGen, but it should already be a habit anyway. After a quick Google search, I find that our model, Julia Vins, is 165 centimeters tall. So the way we find this in Maya is to first get a front view, then we go create measure tools distance tool. The way the distance tool work is that we define two locators and the distance between these locators will be displayed. So you're aware the distance it displays is dependent on the working unit set in your preferences. Mine is set to centimeters, which I believe is the default. So I'll create my first point at the top of the head and the second point at the bottom. You can see that the measurement isn't 165 centimeters. So an easy way to fix this is by selecting everything, including the locators that we set down and hitting Control G to group them. Now when we scale the group, notice that the distant measurement updates. Once we have the correct size, we can now go and delete the three elements of the distance tool from the outliner. If we also want to remove everything from the group, select everything and hit Shift P. So next I'm going to duplicate the character mesh because I'm going to create a scalp from which the hairs will grow. Now we can have the hairs growing directly from the mesh if we wish, but I prefer to create a scalp because there are certain processes within XGen that take much longer to compute if you're using a whole mesh like this. It also makes it easier to make changes to the character mesh if you require down the line. I like to make the scalp cover a slightly larger surface area than I think it needs to be because it's much easier to pull it back than to add more later. Now with the scalp in place I'll give it fresh UVs which is very simple using the Auto Unwrap UVs tool. Just go to Bonus Tools, UV Editing, Auto Unwrap UVs tool. And now you select the scalp and hit Enter Tool. The scalp geometry is very simple, so all we need to do is hit Continue and we have sufficient UVs for the scalp. Finally, I'll apply the default Lambert shader and now we're ready to start digging into XGen. Okay, so the basic idea is to control the shape of the hair using guides, and for the purpose of this tutorial, I will show you three different ways of placing and shaping guides. First, let's hide the stuff we don't need. 
and I'll just hide the proxy here for now, but I'll come back to this in a moment. Now finally, let's open up the XGEM window. From here, we can create a new description and a new collection. So I'm going to type Julia Description, Julia Collection, Splines, randomly across the surface, and I'll change this to Placing and Shaping Guides, and then I'll hit Create. OK, let's get some hair growing. In the XGEM window, we can click this Add or Move Guides button and place guides where we want them on the head. If we want to mirror these guides over, we just need to press the mirror button over here. To preview the hair, we just need to select this eye icon. Well, at least I think it's an eye anyway. To turn the preview off, just click the closed eye. We don't have very many hairs, so let's turn up the density. That's better, but the hairs are too short. We can make the guides longer in a few different ways, but when I'm starting a fresh groom like this, I like to use the set length button over here. So I will select the guides and hit set length. 10 should work. Again, click the eye icon to update. The hairs are a little thick. To make them thinner, adjust the width slider. Also adjust the taper and taper start for more realistic looking hair. OK, that looks a bit better. To shape the guides, you could right click and select Guide Control Point, which gives you controls to manipulate the guides. However, this can be a bit tedious, so instead I prefer to use the Sculpt Guides brush. Holding Shift allows you to quickly resize the brush. It's worth noting that the Sculpt Guides brush works better if we have more control points. So to do this we want to select our guides and hit rebuild. Here we can set the number of control points used by our guides. Let's try 10. That's better. Notice how XGen interpolates the hairs between the guides. This is good, this is what we want, but not always, such as if we want a hair parting for example. To create something like a hair parting, we need to paint a region map. So come over to region map and click this arrow and hit create map. I'll rename the map and increase the resolution. I'll leave the start colour on red and hit create. Let's change our brush settings. Solid brush profile, stylus pressure off, and I'll leave reflection off, but let's set our colour. I'm going to set it to red. Now, this might seem strange given that the mask is already red, but if we hold the control key while painting, we get the inverted colour to the one that we're using. So if I now paint while holding the control key, I'll get the inverted colour to red, which is blue. And what this means is that I can now easily switch between red and blue, making the process a little bit quicker. Now click the disk icon to save the map. And it's important that you don't forget to click this, because clicking this icon will convert the painted texture into a p-text map, which is what XGen understands. So if you don't click it, the updates won't be read by XGen. We also need to turn on the region mask by setting this value to 1. Notice that we now get clean lines between the hair regions. Now one thing that you might notice is that the hair isn't very smooth. If I push the guides a bit more extreme it will become more apparent. This is because a modifier CV count is set to 5. and You can think of this number as basically being the number of divisions along the hairs. So let's bump this up to 20 and see the effect. Now we have much smoother hair. While we're at it, let's bring our spline segments down to 1. This will make the hair slightly rougher, but it will be much less taxing on the system. Also, I like to uncheck only primitives in view, which is a self-explanatory function. It's going to hide the hairs that aren't visible to the camera. And I'm sure this can be a useful tool, I guess, for improving system performance, but in my experience, it can be quite annoying. Then we can set our renderer. 
Okay, enough playing around now, let's get on to the real thing. So, we've seen how we can place guides manually, so let's explore some other options. For this, I'll bring back my ponytail mesh and hide the other pieces. I'm going to use this mesh to create guides by using a process known as tube groom, and to do this, I need to make sure the mesh is a tube. Okay, so that's it for this month's free tutorial. As usual, there is bonus content available on Gumroad. People who subscribe to me on Patreon should have already had that delivered into your inbox, so check that out. And I just go over more of the basics of XGen, as well as provide a PDF, How to Avoid XGen Making You Cry, a beginner's guide. Uh, this month I'm also offering the source files that went into the production of this character including Maya, ZBrush and Photoshop files as well as texture files and render passes etc. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone that has bought the bonus content so far and I would really struggle to make these videos without your help so sincerely thank you and peace.